Abhinav, actually, if you were to look at the last two startups, right, the first two companies anyways were more US bound, if I may right. put it that way. Yeah. The last two companies, if we were to dissect a little from a tech perspective as well. And if you look at Mintra, it was more the luxury, the brand uh, conscious statement right. that we wanted to put out in India. Right. And I think very beautifully done by Mukesh and you know you guys did a terrific job from a tech uh, standpoint as well. But supply chain was still something which is a gray area. Right. Now if you move to a health tech uh, domain as well, right. and most people don't know that it's, it's larger than what it looks like. The right. problems are many. Right. And it's highly regulated right. Right, from a pharmaceutical side. So again, supply chain seems like a gray area. Right. And you've seen this move from both Mintra as well as uh, you know the health tech space that you are in. Right. So could you tell us from supply chain how that has actually evolved? Sure. You know, and how technology has actually played a role? Right. You know, that will be useful for us. Sure. So uh, as you said, right, I mean, uh, the, the supply chain fundamentally is the backbone of any business, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, any any uh, business of goods exchange, uh, be it fashion or uh, pharma uh, mm. uh, stuff, right? Uh, but the, the pharma supply chain particularly is, is, a, is a massive challenge, particularly in our country. Um, mm. If you were to really zoom into the supply chain, uh, pharma supply chain particularly, right? Uh, you'd find that uh, the, the supply chain is extremely fragmented. What I mean mm. by that is, uh, it's a very traditional supply chain with very limited penetration of technology, very, very limited penetration of uh, information technology. I mean, there is obviously technology for pharma, but uh, from an information technology perspective, there is very little penetration. And uh, it's an extremely fragmented supply chain in the sense that, you know, think of it this way. There are anywhere between uh, seven and a half to eight lakh independent, distinct retailers of medicines in the country, registered retailers of medicine in the country, right? Right. And these guys are disconnected from each other. So what I mean by that is, if let's say there is XYZ medicals, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in your neighborhood, and there is, let's say, ABC medical, you know, both are 500 meter apart, let's say. They're just mm -hmm. 500 meters apart. Sure. They are totally disconnected from each other in the sense that they do not have an idea of what is available at this guy and what is available at uh, XYZ, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, what it leads to is that... Uh, as, as a patient, when I walk into a pharmacy uh, to, to get my uh, prescription filled, as mm -hmm. in like buy my medicines, in our country, there is only 60% chance that you'll get all your medicines in one shot. And this is the country average, right? So wow. mm -hmm. if you were to really, so we are fortunate living in big cities that we have access to multiple pharmacies. Right. The moment you start going into tier two, tier three cities, it becomes an even, you know, uh, acute problem mm -hmm. uh, that... You know, there are limited pharmacies with limited space and they can only keep so many medicines, right? Correct. There are around 300,000 um, stock keeping units, different medicines available in the country today, roughly. Mm -hmm. And a normal, even good pharmacy can only keep about anywhere between 5,000 to 10,000 SKUs in stock, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So some 290,000 SKUs have to be procured from somewhere, right? Got it. And where is that somewhere? Mm -hmm. It's basically a distributor. So like there are 8 lakh retailers, mm -hmm. there are anywhere between 80,000 to 1 lakh distributors in the country. Again, sure. independent, isolated distributors with very less penetration of technology. Oops. <laughs> uh, right. So now uh, when you walk into a pharmacy, I don't know if you've experienced it, a lot of people have. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, sir, I don't have this medicine right now. I can deliver it to you tomorrow or the day after yeah. or whenever, right? I can yeah. procure it. So the process behind the scenes, so this is what the retailer tells you, but what is happening behind the scenes is that this guy calls uh, his distributors. Now, right. his di distributors means that he has been working with some two or three or maybe four or five distributors mm -hmm. over the last decade or two so decades. So they don't change them. They are these... This is relationship-based. Okay. Right? This is all relationship-based. Okay. And now he calls this fellow, uh, sir, uh, I need uh, medicines. And, uh, you know, the distributor basically says, yes, you will get these medicines by tomorrow or whatever, mm -hmm. right? And now you have a different problem because even the distributor has very little idea of what all SKUs he has and in what quantities he has these medicines and so on. Right? Mm -hmm. So again, because of the lack of technology, the two people who are making a promise to the actual person in need, mm -hmm. right? They are actually unaware of what's available in the market and what's available with them, right? Mm -hmm. And so it creates a massive access problem in this fragmented supply chain. Mm -hmm. So what we are trying to do at 
at PharmEasy and you know the, the bigger group that we are, we are not only trying to solve for the problem of immediate access online, we are also solving these problems for the retailers and the distributors. Interesting. So we happen to have our biggest uh, you know, marketplace of uh, retailers and distributors. So on one side you have the retailers and on the other side you have the distributors. Mm -hmm. Our technology kind of is embedded in, these, uh, in both these entities. Mm -hmm. And we present a real-time view to both the retailers and the distributors mm -hmm. of what's available in the market, what SLAs, as in what are the service level agreements sure. uh, on which you can get these medicines, uh, what are the discounts available, what are the schemes available. Uh, if you've placed an order, where it is, uh, if you have to make a payment, where it is stuck, if you want to make a payment, you can do that uh, on the platform and a lot of other things from logistics to warehousing to uh, demand visibility to price visibility to discounts visibility you have all of that available on one single platform right uh, it's somewhat similar to you know what uh, the likes of uber and and amazon uh, they mm -hmm. are doing to us as consumers right i mean 10 years ago you know, hailing a cab would be a nightmare right? yeah, yeah. you you have a <laughs> flight to catch at five in the morning and you are at the mercy of the uh, the driver. The, yeah, the tra <laughs> taxi stand fellow, yeah. right? And you make a call and you you almost, and you know, this has practically happened with me, so I can, uh, you know, I can relate with it uh, so much more that mm. you know, I have to literally beg, sir, I have a flight to catch at <laughs> five in the morning, please be there at four, sure. uh, right? And, and this was the challenge that Uber saw, right? Mm. All the information that you needed as a consumer to make a decision mm. is right at your fingertip from who the driver is, is he a good guy or a bad guy? The rating tells you that. Uh, the condition of the cab that that you get to know. It's a you know it's a I don't know a, a, a ambassador cab or it's a you know new fancy car. Uh, you get all that information. Mm -hmm. You get the information about the route. You get the information about the cost. Mm -hmm. You get all that information right at your fingertips. Sure. And that just makes it very easy for you to make a decision. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with the likes of Amazon, for instance, or Mintra or Flipkart, right? What, what they are doing is that they are making this information available to the consumer so that they can make the decision uh, you know, in, a, in a seamless way. So they right. solve this problem of supply chain in a different domain. We are solving that problem in the domain, a disconnected domain of pharma where the need is, is critical. You know, this, is, uh, this is a genuine need. This is not something uh, that's optional, right? Correct. So uh, getting it right and making these, these distinct pieces connected with technology uh, is our vision uh, using technology. So we want to make sure that every in independent entity in this uh, pharma ecosystem, mm -hmm. the patient, mm -hmm. the doctor, we haven't talked about the doctor, yeah. the retailer, <laughs> mm -hmm. the distributor, and the manufacturer, right? These are the five distinct entities involved in the pharma ecosystem. The, the patient, doctor, retailer, distributor, and the manufacturer right and these are all today totally disconnected from each other mm -hmm. the doctor for instance prescribes the medicines to you mm -hmm. but the prescription is handwritten mm -hmm. in most cases mm -hmm. and a handwritten pre prescription is not digital right? right so you cannot look at this prescription at a later point in time you mm -hmm. cannot take this prescription to a different doctor so let's say i happen to be in bangalore and my doctor has prescribed certain things to me mm -hmm. and uh, for whatever reason i have to go to delhi or maybe you know outside the country somewhere sure. Uh, that doctor, if I'm consulting one uh, at that place, mm -hmm. has to start from from the beginning, from yeah. all my allergies to all the conditions that I may have had in the past, to whatever else mm -hmm. that might have happened in my history. This has to start has to be really retold to mm -hmm. this individual, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's a disconnected ecosystem. It's a non-digital, non-technology uh, based or led disconnected ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So we are building capabilities to digitize the doctor practice as well, okay. right? So, so that the doctor uh, gets the benefit of uh, referencing uh, things from the past mm -hmm. uh, and also extend uh, those capabilities to the patient. So you also get access to your own prescriptions, uh, your history, your symptoms, your diagnosis, all of that is available to you mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in this connected ecosystem sure. uh, where even the doctor is digitized. So doctor is digitized, the retailer is digitized, the distributor is digitized, 
And now the manufacturers are also directly reaching out to people in the ecosystem oh, okay. using the same connected ecosystem, right? So uh, fundamentally from an overall supply chain perspective, the, the basic problem is that you have five key entities mm -hmm. and these five key entities have largely been non-digital and they have been disconnected from each other for all this time. And in, a, in an economy like ours, in a setup like ours, where there are 1.3 billion people and you know, there are only you know, 1,000 doctors, sorry, uh, 0.64 doctors per 1,000 individuals in our country, right? Uh, <laughs> mm. In that kind of a setup, a totally disconnected ecosystem would mean a lot of inefficiency in Correct. the system. And that's what we are trying to solve by building technology that sits across all of these entities. And technology in general is able to talk to each other better compared to humans and processes, right? So sure. it's a very simple, straightforward thing. Once you build it properly, then these pieces can talk to each other in their own languages and the technology does the translation between them um, mm -hmm. and, and thereby gives you a very connected ecosystem where every stakeholder gets the visibility of every transaction they are making in the system. Sure.